So, so Lani, you you study this in the laboratory, right? I do. How, how do you study wonder or awe in a in a scientific lab? It's tricky. It's a great question. It's something we struggle with all the time. As an emotion researcher, I have to be mindful that any time I study an emotional experience in the lab, I'm studying a pale echo of what people experience in their real lives. But the reality is that that pale echo is enough to tell us quite a bit about what the consequences of exposing people to emotional stimuli look like. In my lab, we use film clips, we use photographs displayed on a very large TV screen, we use relived personal experiences to evoke awe, people tell us they're feeling awe when they see those things or when they have those memories, and then we can pretty reliably capture certain kinds of consequences across those different eliciting uh, (laughs) techniques. So, so what hap- just to follow up on this, what, what have you found? I mean, what, what happens either mentally or physiologically yeah. when people have an experience of awe? I think the best way I can summarize those effects, starting with the body, how many, I assume most of you are familiar with the fight, flight, sympathetic nervous system branch of, of, of the nervous system, right? There's a particular segment of that that influences the heart, that not only speeds up the rate of the heartbeat, but also makes the heart muscle contract faster. That actually withdraws somewhat in in response to awe-eliciting images. That's what we've seen in the lab. And I've never seen that in response to any other positive emotion, at least not that we've studied in the lab. So that's one thing that was really quite striking. From a cognitive standpoint, the best way I can summarize what we've seen is that right after an awe experience, people are paying closer attention to whatever is in front of them. And when we ask them to remember details about what was and what was not present in a complex stimulus, their memory is actually more accurate. And in particular, they're less likely to impose detailed content into their memory that wasn't there based upon their prior experience. And that's actually a pretty remarkable finding. Wow, that's fascinating. So you're suggesting that they're not just bringing all of their preconceptions in there. There's, what, uh, n- introduction of new knowledge Exactly. Here? They actually seem to be suppressing their preconceptions in this state for a really brief period of time. And that may open a window of opportunity to a variety of different forms of learning and understanding the world that we live in.